speaking of experiences, um, you've played uh, in Davis Cup for Pakistan, and I was wondering uh, to ask you, uh, you know, how that opportunity came about. So that was an interesting story as well. I uh, was was actually visiting uh, Pakistan, and uh, we we were there actually more so for an uncle. He was uh, he was not well, so we wanted to kind of. Uh, say hello and see how he was doing. And I hadn't visited uh, Pakistan for a long time. And uh, I was actually in training mode. So I, 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 was, I, was, I was in shape. And uh, what happened was while we were there, we were there for a few months, um, I got invited to uh, a tournament, a local like open event, and I ended up doing quite well in it. And then um, I got invited to um, trials, which were, they're like, hey, you know what, trials are happening for Davis Cup. Uh, do you want to try out, you know, because we're looking for players to add to the add to the squad. And I was just kind of like, whoa, this is pretty cool. I mean, uh, luckily, I was actually for that, for that situation, I was, um, I was, I was in town because they're, you know, locally in Islamabad, they had, um um the trial so then i tried out it was a it was a tough it was a tough tryout because there were six or six guys six of the top uh pakistani players uh we had to do a round robin every day for six days hmm. and we had to play best of three out of five sets you know on uh on clay so so you can imagine um you know the grind and then you know the 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 uh the weather there in, at that time in general most of the year it's quite hot but we're talking like you know 40 degrees canadian and probably over what was that like over uh, close to 100 no i mean like what's that yeah. 90 90 something uh so w it was hot and but i think because i was in shape and i was physically i remember i was probably in the best physical shape of my life that really got me through it because i wasn't really uh in tennis shape, so to speak, but then I think my physicality got me through those round robin matches. And uh, one story was like the last, the very last match. Um, it was a make it or break it type of thing situation. If I won the match, I was on the team, and if I lost, uh, the other guy was on the team. So wow. a lot of pressure. Um, but actually, that was a that was a cool story uh, to share. That. Okay. Uh, we played, uh, we played first two sets, I actually ended up losing. So because it was best of five, I lost the first two sets. You know, I was actually, you know, because it was clay, you can't really get into the net as much. And uh, I was trying to kind of out hit the guy and shorten points from the baseline. And the guy was, was actually really good with just picking out, you know, taking pace and putting, putting the balls into the corners and making me run. So uh, he won the first two sets and I was like, oh man. So now I'm looking up a mountain thinking like, okay, this is going to be a tough grind, uh, to, to battle this out. And so what I started to do just, you know, I, this was a random thing where, you know, we were, where I was moved side to side and I threw a ball up high to him, kind of a moon, moon ball type of ball, you know, like 20 feet in the air, you know, kind of a rising ball above the guy's shoulder. And the guy hits, he hits a short ball, like right in the service box, like, you know, almost like, you know, a ball fed into the service box. And I step in, you know, take the ball early and get into the net and, 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 and put the ball away on a volley and then, okay, try it again. I'm like, all right, let's put it up and give him another high ball above the shoulder. So the guy, and wow. I couldn't figure this out for the first two sets. Cause I was out hit, I was trying to out hit him and he just loved balls, right? Like right in his waist height. And uh, so anyways, the guy couldn't hit anything over his shoulder. Wow. So, um, so then I mixed it up. I just went high, heavy, you know, I mixed up the pace. I went slower, higher balls. Next thing you know, he starts dumping balls in the service line again. And then I just, I just, I exploited that play and, and I won the third set. Then I won the fourth set. Now we're in the fifth and this is getting to the sixth day, um, <laughs> of round robin matches where both of us have been just spent with, you know, a couple of, couple of matches where, you know, went a couple of matches that were five sets before that, right? And uh, getting accustomed to the weather. And so anyway, so because of the mixing up uh, of play high ball by the fifth set, you know, I was slicing a bit, I was changing up the pace with like a hard ball, then I'd throw in a high ball. So to, not to just, you know, give them only high balls, eventually you could start grooving on them, then I mixed it up. And then he actually started cramping at, what was it, two all in the fifth set. He had to take a timeout 
And then anyways, finally ended up grinding that match out. Uh, it was like 6-3 in the fifth set. And I was just like, you know, I was just laying there on the clay, like <laughs> after the match, just like what just happened. Okay. And that was a really, really cool, cool uh, experience for me because then, you know, also having the, uh, having the, you know, check mark on, you know, you're on the team now. And then two weeks after that, we were in uh, Iran actually to play oh. our first uh, Davis Cup tie, which was at that time we were in group three. And so we, uh, and then I got to meet Assam Qureshi, who, you know, who's, who's a great doubles uh, player and a singles player. He got to top hundred and singles as well. And then he started focusing more on, on doubles and uh you know a great guy great uh teammate and so he came in for again two weeks after trials uh we had a davis cup practice um with the team the guys that were on the team so Sam koreshi came and and then uh you know we had a we had a practice and and got to meet them and it was just a new it, i wasn't expected again i was just there in pakistan to to really just meet family and friends mm -hmm. and then next thing you know in a few weeks later i'm on i'm on a flight to go to iran to play my first davis cup tie like it was a dream uh dream come true really right so uh i guess it happened at the right time and uh so yeah so we went to iran to play our first davis cup tie at that time being in group three the the, the setup was actually you had like eight eight or ten teams from that we were in the asia pacific uh you know zone of play and they um uh, they had a bunch of teams like Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Iran, Syria, uh, you know, a bunch of other uh, teams that were there uh, that were kind of doing a round robin play. And then we ended up uh, getting we actually won the tournament. So we we played Iran in the semifinals, I remember. So we were in Tehran, you know, the nice. uh, uh, the capital. They have a great facility there because, I mean, they had a set up, you know, back back then they had a set up in the 70s, I think, uh, with the Shah. Yeah. And he had some, you know, the main facility in terms of the f sports facility, unbelievable. And we were blown away because, you know, you hear stories that, you know, obviously on media saying, you know, uh, you know, the country was modern, very modern country. They had a set up in, in place uh, at the at the club that was just, you know, top notch. We had security for each team, this, that this facility was unbelievable. They had clay courts, red clay, but they had like little mini stadiums for each court. It was all, it was awesome. And then they had a main, you know, stadium court as well as soccer facilities. So their, their sport facility was unbelievable. Uh, but that's where we played and beautiful scenery as well. We had a big mountain in the back, back, you know, so it was, it was a great experience. And so we played Iran in the, in the semis and then who would we play in the finals? I think we beat Sri Lanka in the finals of that event, which moved us on to group two for the next year um so that was a crew i mean you know first first time and i was playing doubles uh specifically with my teammate uh Asim shafiq at that time and uh, Qureshi was playing most mostly singles and then he would play doubles with his partner uh akil khan uh who's a good player as well so no i mean and and i was uh in the round robins and we went four and oh which was which was amazing you know you know to, to go out and for the first time being able to win your four, four first four matches at in Davis Cup against some of these other teams it was it was just unbelievable so um, couldn't ask for more as a dream come true and again it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't planned you know like I'm gonna try out I'm gonna go aspire to play Davis Cup it was just it was just a neat story to be able to do that so uh, and then the following year we played Philippines um, in a tie and in Manila. And uh, we played against uh, Akil Khan and I played doubles and we played against Cecile Mamet. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. Cecile. Uh, yeah. He was the top, I think, top 60, he was top 60 ATP. And then Treat, the Conrad Tret. Treat Huey, Tret yeah, Huey. We played, buddy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Podcast so, too, yeah. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So at that time, uh, I didn't know who Conrad was, but then he ended up, you know, become a really good double specialist. He got, yeah. you know, he what was what was his ranking at one point? He got he got up there, right? Yeah, really high, top twenty maybe. Yeah, uh, so maybe higher. Yeah. So we uh, we lost straight sets to those guys, but it was it was an awesome experience being away and then playing an away match in Manila. You know, visiting Manila and and during that time it was monsoon uh, weather too. So we were kind of in an indoor. It was honestly the most humid place I've ever played and been in. After every practice, we'd be, you know, I remember back then we didn't have, uh, you know, the whole media thing, but, you know, we'd be drenching our, uh, you know, uh, socks and, 
in our in our shirts and after practice and like just water would be just you know pouring out of our our out of our clothes and stuff that's how humid it was but we played away there and uh you know and then playing away obviously dealing with the crowd the crowds against you and it kind of reminded us of a little bit of college tennis you know in college tennis obviously you get you know you, you get guys from the other team you know you know uh talking talking you up and mm-hmm. talking some smack like you you know you're not good you suck and you, you can't play trying to get into your head a little bit and initially and you know what i'm talking about yeah, totally. you played college tennis i remember yeah. a group of guys would stand right behind you in the fence you know just you know they you know when no one's around just talking smack like you know you, while you're picking up a ball to go serve again they're just trying to get into your head so you can you know lose to their teammate right but you you learn you learn as you go that you got to learn how to block that stuff out. And that's part of the, you know, that's part of the, the grind and the suffering that you go through of competition. You have to, you have to learn how to block those things out and focus on what your, your tasks ahead are in the match. And, and that, that part was cool too, to, to be away in Manila and, and, and uh, it was a nice crowd. They weren't, you know, getting rowdy, like you hear some stories in South America, you know, people throwing chairs and stuff at, <laughs> at uh, some of these players, but um it was it was really it was a really cool experience. We ended up losing that tie to them. We didn't have Assam, unfortunately. He was actually playing a ch- a big ATP event that he couldn't get out of to play. He was still in a tournament, so you couldn't get out of it to play uh, a Davis Cup event. So unfortunately, last minute we had to change up the lineups a bit and and play uh, play up a little bit. And so the experience, but you know, I can't take that experience away. It was awesome. You know, we were playing uh, against some some legendary players with Cecile and. And then Conrad being an awesome doubles player um, in the future. So, you know, great experience. It was awesome. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, uh, as a half Iranian, half Filipino, it was particularly nice to hear about those. That's stories. awesome, man. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, what's the chances yeah. of that? So, yeah, that's really um, sick. that is really cool. So, yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was awesome. And also, you know, visiting these, again, tennis, you know, I would say, the experiences and the, the opportunities you get to see different places as well. You know, I can never take that back. You see different communities, you see different lifestyles. You, you know, I remember, you know, even in Pakistan, my home country, um, you know, I, uh, uh, I was born there. So the cool thing about, I look back at it now, my parents were living in Canada, they were visiting Pakistan and I was born there. And then they came back when I was like maybe six or seven months old and uh, I looked, I always thought about that. And, I, you know, we have dual citizenship in terms of Canadian and, and Pakistani. And uh, and I was like, man, like, you know, so why do I have this, you know, Can- you know, uh, Pakistani passport? And then, you know, I wouldn't have played Davis Cup if I didn't have my Pakistani passport, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't going to be able to do that. So everything kind of works out. But also, you know, seeing those third, third world countries, you know, the, the tough circumstances that people live in, in terms of poverty, and it really, again, it opens your eyes that it opens your eyes up to the, you know, the fact that we have it pretty good here in the West and, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are suffering, but then the, uh, you know, the opportunities that I've, you know, that I've gotten to be able to, to play and, 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 and get those get experiences under the belt, you know, very grateful for those, uh, opportunities and, um, you know, wouldn't take it back for, for anything. So. Hundred percent, yeah. Just being able to represent your country, I'm sure you felt uh, really proud about that. Um, and yeah, when you talked about like um, heckling, I remember one time in Cornell, we were playing a Cornell Invitational tournament, and some guy w- was saying, "My grandmother plays better than you." Like when I was picking up the ball, so I, I'm sure you got much worse, but I thought that was funny. 